What's up guys, of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Scavenger. And today is a very, very special battle, really. It is against the D-Train, LBA champion, really, of this league. And uh, yeah, this is the division final. So, not the last game, per se, uh, but definitely our division's last battle. You know, the strongest battler will be crowned after this. And yeah, I was really nervous. Uh, before going in, guys, I'm going to leave, of course, D-Train's YouTube channel down below. He's a great guy, honestly. Uh, he's one of those guys that he's so modest and so just such a nice person in general. So he's, he's a very cool guy. I appreciate him as a player and a person. Make sure to check him out. He needs all the support he can get. He is a one hell of a battler. Uh, really scared of him in general due to that because he's so powerful. Now, I did not leave a video about my pre plans because he actually dropped a few Pokemons, which made that video quite irrelevant. Uh, so if you want to skip to the battle, I'm going to link here or post when the battle starts. So you get a feel for it and you just can skip it. If you want to hear my thoughts, here we go. <laughs> now, uh, he dropped the Crodont and Heolisk for Sneasling Ligar uh, two, two days before the match, which meant one thing. Uh, he was preparing for the sand. Uh, Kronon was a huge threat for me, and I knew that we could have a weather war, uh, so I was expecting Politoed and Seismitoed, of course. And uh, all in my mind, I was thinking just one thing. I cannot win against the rain team. I just, I can't. I don't have the means nor power to win that kind of situation. I should try to embrace it, but I shouldn't try to win it, which means that I should not bring Hippowd onto this game. Now he has, as you see here, Sneasel, Gengar, Gligar, Hunchcrow, <laughs> Mandibus, of course, uh, Landris, and Seismitoad. So he skipped out on Politoad, Metagross, Altaria, which of course is the Mega Form, and not Tornadoes. And I was really fearing Tornadoes and the Mega Altaria, definitely. Me Metagross would be. Uh, one big threat for me to deal with, considering if I had brought Sand Rush, which I felt was the best kind of idea first off, Stoutland would have been kind of fine, but it actually isn't due to, uh, like I said, I can't win the Weather War, which means that Stoutland will be far, far too slow to be able to really coexist with this kind of imaginative. Uh, so that was something that really hit me, so I gave up on that idea altogether, which means that I decided to play like D-Train usually do, because he's a very, very, and I mean extremely, aggressive player, he has a lot of tough plays, uh, he rather sack a Pokemon to get momentum than actually beating something by prediction, so I, I'm i gonna try to play the same way, which is usually just something I do when I get drunk, I'm not drunk this battle though, I, I really weren't, and uh, I decided to skip on Chansey, Dianchi, Hippowdon, and there is one more I avoid this battle, I'll try to find out who that was. Um, <laughs> I hate when I do this. Uh, I'll figure it out. In short, I skipped on a lot of defensive Pokemons, and uh, losing off of Hippowdon for the first time was kind of tough. Uh, I haven't really played a game without Hippowdon, and um, anyway, uh, I decided here to have a Scarfed Thunderous uh, with coverage move with Grass Knot, Volt Switch. Uh, he, he basically, as a lead, he can't get the rocks up first turn. I need to stop everything in my power, stop the rocks. To stop the hurting both the Thunderous and Scalopede switch ins. That was my main priority. So, Grass Knot, Volt Switch, Knockoff for Gengar, and um, let's see. I think I decided on Hidden Power Ice to be able to deal with Lando and Gligar if they were a part of this battle, which they were. Uh, Stoutland, uh, super, super special defensive set with um, Chateau Barry to be able to take fighting hits. Which basically means that a Gengar's Focus Blast and uh, Tornado's Focus Blast will do around 40%. That's still a lot, uh, but uh, that was my best bet, really. And Return, Crunch, Coverage, and Ice Fang for Landers. If Landers decides to go for Focus Blast, I should be able to live it with 60% uh, hit on me. And Ice Fang does around 90, which is a major factor here. Uh, Magnuson, Air Balloon, able to check 
any Pokemon that could usually want to kill it. Uh, and that is what I'm going to keep in mind. I have Hidden Power Grass build to check Seismitoad. Uh, Keldeo, which Hidden Power Grass 2 for Seismitoad, of course. If it brings a defensive set, I can be able to deal with it. And has Skull, Secret Sword, and Toxic. Sigilith is the Focus Sash set with Energy Ball, Heat Wave, uh, Ice Beam, and Psy Shock in case it brought Assault Vested Tornadoes. And Scolipede for the Mega Altaria uh, with Poison Jab. So Poison Jab, Mega Horn, and I do have access to uh, Aqua Tail. To be able to, because, or rather, after one speed boost, I should be still able to outspeed Landorus at plus two, which means that um, basically Aqua Tail should be able to do a lot of damage to it. And that was really my game idea. Now, Sneasel complicates things because it has priority Ice Shard, which does a lot of damage to Thunderous. And just in general, Sneasel is really, really tough to deal with. And since I don't, I intend this battle to be short, I didn't see a reason for myself to go for rocks or anything like that, because I didn't really need it. I just needed to beat him at the situations that's gonna matter. And that was generally my whole game idea. And um, whether or not that will make it or break it is um, up for debate during this game. And you guys are gonna see some nifty, nifty situations. And really, D-Train is such a powerful trainer. I have no idea how this would have ended. So, starting off, like I said, I'm gonna go for the Thunderous. He's gonna start with Mr. Toad. And like I said here previously, I needed, in every case here, to make sure that he didn't get his Stealth Rocks up. But he has to barely to reduce grass to the move, and what do you know? I still wouldn't have killed it. I still wouldn't have killed that bastard. And it goes for Stealth Rocks, they are here to stay. I don't have any Spinner, nor Defogger. And I'm gonna keep going for those Grass Knots, because I don't see the point of stopping. Now he will switch out to, of course, a Gengar, which to reduce that damage to a mere point of he basically just smiling, laughing at me. So I'm forced here to switch out. And he's actually gonna pull a double switch on me, but the thing is here, this is where he finds out that I'm Scarf too. You know why I will do that? Because he switched out too, which means that he realized I'm outspeed him when I shouldn't. And that of course means that I know that I outspeed him in a given situation like that. Now, uh, I'm gonna bring Fault, like I said, it is a defensive set, and uh, I'm basically gonna go for return here. I know I am gonna 2 it KO Aurea, I really just wanted to go for damage. I was risking the Scald, and now it's just all kinds of bad here. Because Gligar is here, and Gligar takes that really well. It was pretty much the very reason itself I decided to actually skip on Abandoned Southland. There was no way I was gonna minimal match up against uh, Gligar with Divirelight, I knew that. Uh, anyway, he's gonna actually switch out not using the agility he got. I was really scared it had Aerial Ace or Acrobatics, and those would do a significant amount of damage to my Keldeo. Now, I will do the obvious play, going for Scald. Uh, he will stay in though, um, probably not seeing the Hidden Power Grass, which actually will finish off the Seismitoad. Super important, because that's one of the few Grass or Electric Immunities he got. Now, then again, he has two more, so who the hell cares. So anyway, Star's Gold is gonna come here, and um, there was nothing I could do here. It really wasn't. I decided to switch out, bring a full Fiat again, hoping for Shadow Ball. There's no reason for him to do so. And he's gonna go for Psychic, which would have hit me super effectively, or my Keldeo super effectively. Um, luckily, though, it doesn't. And um, I'm now in a range where I could have survived a Focus Blast, and I knew that, even with that uh, Life Orb. But it does miss that, and I hit the Thunder Wave, or as I said, in life. Nifty moves! There we go! Son of a bitch! Honestly, that was the outcome I was really hoping for, because that meant that Gengar was now... Not that they... It, it's still dangerous, but I don't need to really work around it too much. Now, I will go for Cruncher. Since it showed me agility on Gligar, I knew that it's very likely to be bad and pass. So I knew I needed to force him here to... Um, if he goes for agility, um, that... Um, if I show him Ice Fang, that I'm forcing him to switch out. He can't... He can't survive that onslaught, and I had to keep going. I couldn't stop going for Ice Fang. I just I needed to break that thing apart and really scare it out. Uh, so Sneasel is here, and due to pursuit, I decided to stay in here. It's 
it's against my nature, it really is, but I had so few options left there. He got me, Stoutman did admirably though, kicking the Gengar in the butt with the first T-Wave. So I'm gonna bring Keldeo, which is a very, very nice check to this Pokemon. And I'm gonna go for Save Skull because I didn't wanna... I didn't wanna risk the Secret Sword. While it does kill him, it still would have been quite risky, considering the Lando switch in. And uh, I, luckily I do get him burned here. But it actually won't really matter that much because I would have still taken him out no matter what. And the knockoff still is, of course, not a super effective hit. Now, we will come to a situation here which is gonna be a bit slow and for good reasons. I really didn't think he would bring the Manibus. And the thing I have to take it on ha is going to have an issue dealing with it because, like I said, my. Uh, Thunderous is Scarf, which means I lock myself into the likes of Volt Switch, he can utilize that going to Tigar or Landris, and I'm locked in, which means I can't utilize that well. Uh, the other situation is I bring Magnusome, but I'm not risking my, mag my, um, my air balloon to pop, so I don't really want to do that. This is, that is basically like the last resource I got, so keeping Keldeo kind of stalling him out, it's not really stalling, it's more facing him off, really. Uh, is what really all I need to do. Now I did show in Toxic, so it felt like I would do that again, so I knew that Gengar could come in, and there was no risk of me of going for a Skull here anyway, and I, you know, I could burn him, and that takes care of the Cyrus Gold. And um, yeah, that's great, that is really great. Uh, Gengar was of course not a threat anymore after the T-Wave, and knowing that was super, super important. Uh, it was of course, of course, yeah, unfortunate that because David did tell me that it didn't have Sludge Wave or Sludge Bomb and decided to go for Hyper Shatter Ball instead. Had it gone, had a had it had a stab move uh, that would have landed on Stoutland, it would not have been as risky going for Focus Blast and it ending up kicking him in the butt really because of that. Uh, because that got him, of course, paralyzed. Now, Keldeo will fall, that's fine. That is super, super, super fine. And um, because the Tombs is um, well, it's not really a threat. That's not the issue. The issue is that I can't really take it out first turn, uh, which is annoying. Uh, now, I will decide to go for a Flash Cannon here and not go for the prop of uh, the um, T-Bolt or Volt Switch. And I did that because I felt that he could switch out and that would have been annoying. Uh, because, like I said, I can't really risk the immunities against me here. It's um, it's quite intimidating how well that works. You know, we had, you had three ground types in your team and they work wonders for you because they lock down probably one of my hardest hitters against this team. Now, he will go for a roost here. He's not really stalling it out. I don't think that's the point. I think he just wants to see if he can recover more than he actually takes residual damage. Now, it doesn't work like that and he will eventually find that out and decide to sack it. And um, there was no way that this was going to work differently. And I think that kind of came through for him eventually. Uh, so the last flash gun here will be, of course, close to killing him. He will go for a foul play, and Toxic will take me out. Uh, that's that, basically. So while Manibus, uh, as a standalone Pokémon, did not do a lot of things, it still stood tall against my Magnezone, and you know didn't really fall. Um, and that was actually something that I needed Magnezone to be able to be avoid being stalled out. But I really didn't think who he would have brought that. I didn't think so. But then again, there we did it. So anyway, I'm gonna go for Flash Cannon here, and I'm gonna get the special defense drop, and now he will go for an agility. And this, my people, is the very situation. There is no word defining how glad I were when I saw the bad pass. I thought he would go for kill then bad pass, but no. No, he's doing it. He's doing it. His this could, this could turn out ugly. This could turn out ugly. Alejandro, how much will this do? Ah, oh, right in the kisser! Right in the kisser! Oh! Oh, dear God! And I'm not gonna lie, that was that was a big deal. That was a really, really big deal. Because Landers was probably his last stop, really. Well, I might still live, it's like I said there. It is, um... It is Focus Sash, you should be able to survive it. It's still in that moral gray area where it just... It just destroyed his last chance of actually turning this thing around. Like I said before, my Funerous is um, Scarf, but even so, 
I would not have been able to outspeed a plus two, uh, um, what do you call it, a plus two Lando, and I knew that. So Sigler was my last call, and if he pulled a stunt like that one more time, things would have turned really, really ugly. Now, we do manage here, he, he's gonna stall me out. I think he was trying to uh, find a footing, you know, just basically get agility up to so outspeed, and then finish it off. So that was a very, very nice thing for him to do, and I get what it was tr what it was trying to do. Uh, unlucky for him, and uh, I really mean that. Uh, it will not pay off due to me packing the ice beam. And he'll go for a roost here, and he is so <laughs> unlucky. It's, it's not even funny how bad it is, but the next ice beam will freeze him. And um, there is no way of coming back from that. Uh, <laughs> I did laugh about this a whole lot, really. It was so unexpected. And here's, of course, the live version of that. Mythos had enough. But it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. I am focused, Ash. Yeah, he's forfeited. Ooh. Fuck yeah! Yeah! Fucking did it! Finals! Ugh! Yes! Damn. And well, <laughs> I was really excited about their win. You know, looking back at that live version, the reason I didn't upload it, like I said, is because the audio is kind of off, which, which frustrates the hell out of me because I, I was really hoping it was in sync, and I didn't really check that out before the match, and nobody complained either. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I mean, I kind of had this game uh, once things turned, uh, or rather, once Stoutling got um, Gengar paralyzed. I think that was a turning point in the match, because until that point, I had it rough. There was not a whole lot that I could do against uh, um, D-Train. And like I said previously, and this is actually the thing that stands out in my pre-planning set, that the reason I didn't bring my weather team was because I knew we would win the weather war. I think he felt that same way, like he didn't really want to deal with the weather teams. He rather keep the sand up and try to use it to his best abilities than the other way around. And I think he got very 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 sure that that was the way I was gonna go at it. And it basically came down to the better plays instead because not our bigger per our biggest perks, uh, which are is our weather strategies, were not involvement whatsoever in this battle. And that really, really looks like the outcome was more about who had the better pre-planning. Now, like I said, I am lucky with the Focus Blast Mist. That actually has a chance of killing me with life from Bond, and that's something I didn't count for. Uh, because I was so sure it was going to be Scarfed. And uh, yeah, besides that, um, that was basically it. Like, had I not had a Focus Sash... Sigliff, I might not have been so adamant about Magnuson and losing it. Magnuson was a major player in this battle. And not because of the strength it was given, it was because the pain it brought. Um, it's, as a standalone Pokemon, it's not really that relevant for my roster, but this time it really came through. It was exactly what I needed it to be. It was exactly the Pokemon that was needed to be able to, of course, to deal with the Metabuzz of not being stalled out and to be able to deal with both Ligar and Landorus, not on super effective side, but keeping them on tabs, and uh, with Air Balloon, it was generally threatening and kept things at bay. And I didn't... It, he was actually my last pick for this team. He was the least valued player going into this battle. And um, I was ba basically debating whether I should bring this one or Mega Garchomp, but once he picked uh, Sneasel for his roster, um, Garchomp was out. There was no way I was gonna do that. And uh, that that very reason is the reason that Magnus got picked. And what a game changer he were. Now, I will say this. Had David, my opponent, played the way I thought he would, I should have lost. It's one of those things. Like, had he brought the rain team, I don't think I would have ended up being able to beat him. There is so many factors here, of course. But I was basically designing this team to be able to deal with that weather team. Uh, I was really unsure whether or not he could win, and I knew that going in. That were that was the very reason I was so nervous. Uh, but I don't know what I was planning. I'm I'm pretty much thinking he planned my team to be quite aggressive and tough to bring down. 
So he thought he designed a team to be able to deal with that. And I don't think I brought what he was expecting, which made this game wide open. It really were. Um, I don't know what, what more to say, David. If you're watching this, uh, I want to really say good game. Um, I thought it was a very nice game. Was, like I said, I was extremely nervous. And uh, honestly, like I said previously, I, I was only glad that we had this battle. Whether or not the outcome would have win a lot, would be a win or loss, I, I wouldn't have minded. If I lost, I wouldn't have cared at all because it was against you. It was against the best player of the league. And, you know, that was for me what it was all about. It was not about winning and proving myself. It was about finally have that game I forfeited so long ago and try to make the best out of it. And I think I did. Um, so, yeah, David, thanks, man. It was a very exciting match, and I'm glad I had the chance to battle you, and I hope I can battle you soon again. And now we're waiting for the Delta Division to uh, finish their finals off, and then we're back to square one. The pre-planning. We're, we're gonna win this shit. We made it this far, right, people? We're gonna do this. That's awesome. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you had a blast watching this. Because I sure as hell did. And yeah, remember, sky's the limit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.